the hospital and just phoned because my mum's gone in. You've had a busy week. I've been wondering how you've been doing. I was um, really abusive to me and dad. They did the best they could. They did the best they could. And you deserved more love than you received. So how I was related to you when I was little is how I now relate to myself. This is In Therapy with Alex Howard, a first-of-its-kind series that places you directly in the therapy room. My name is Alex Howard, and it is my hope that by bringing you on the journey with us, you too can learn the tools to transform your life. This series, we're following Haley, whose traumatic upbringing has resulted in severe depression and anxiety, as well as debilitating obsessive compulsive disorder. Haley has come to in therapy because she's decided enough is enough and wants to live the rest of her life free from the constraints of the past. We can't know the circumstances of our future, but we can decide the place from which we're going to meet them. There's almost a grown-up me that's taking the little one's hand and saying, this is okay with Dad Strong. So a lot of the things that you may have anxiety about, if you know that you're going to meet them from a place of strength, you don't have to be afraid. Join us each week as we follow every step of Haley's journey, both in and outside of the therapy room. As well as the tools I give Haley in the sessions, I'll also be sharing weekly top tips so you can begin to unlock your true potential. This is In Therapy. It's the day of Haley's seventh session with me. Cool. Almost. Hello, Haley. How are you doing? <laughs> you, you, you said you were going to do a comedy bit at some point, and this is the day. This is the day. Can you see that on No. No. That's the best entrance so far, I think. In last week's session, Hayley and I began to explore her relationship with her feelings and specifically her inner child. We will open this up further in a little bit. But first, I know the last week has been particularly challenging for Hayley and I'm keen to know how she's been getting on. Well, Hayley, it's good to see you. You've had a busy week. I've been wondering how you've been doing, how your, how your MRI scan was, how your mum got on. So, yeah, what's been happening? Oh, big sigh. Mm. I'm still alive, I think. No. <laughs> it appears <laughs> this way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just saying to Oliver when I came in, um, I've had to go moment, moment, moment um, to get through each moment, mm. staying in the present or I wouldn't have coped. Mm. Um, so to the point that until I actually sat down in the chair, I hadn't actually realised where I was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, do, I, do you I, want to start with the MRI scan? How, how was that yeah, for you? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had a panic attack that's that bad <laughs> in the mm. scanner. But um, I um, d sort of did what you said and breathed through them and... Um, I was okay, and the mm. very, you forget how bad they are, don't you? <laughs> you know, I don't forget. They're well. called panic yeah. attacks for a reason. I mean, no, yeah. that having having been in the unique position of had an actual heart attack and a panic attack, I can say that panic attacks are worse, mm. and people actually don't believe you when you say that, but they yeah. really are. And so I, I forgot how bad they are. It's like these are really bad, yeah. but I was okay because um, I was expecting them. And it was probably always going to happen because I was absolutely shattered before I went mm. in and I've had a lot of scans on my heart and MRIs and I always get them. So I, I was absolutely fine. If you said to me, you've got to go back in a scanner now, I'd be like, yeah, okay, no worries, mm. back in the scanner and whatever. You, you know, just write it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I thought, I thought to myself, oh no, I failed, I've had a panic attack. And then I thought, no, failing is refusing to go in and being still afraid of it. And mm. so I haven't failed at all. Something happened that I expected. And I was like, yeah, we're done, whatever. So the yeah. inner critic came in and was like, oh, let's rip you apart because you've failed. But isn't it interesting that you noticed the inner critic? Yeah, it's true. And rather than collapsing in submission to it, yeah. you were able to recognize, hang on a second, 
I've actually just done something really hard and really brave. Yeah. And my inner critic's trying to use that against, yeah. against me. Yeah. I'm actually going to give myself some credit for that. Yeah. You just did it. Yeah. Because I think the measure of a week like this last week is not that everything's perfect and hunky dory. Yeah. It's how you are able to respond differently. Yeah. To those challenges. Yeah. And if I if we imagine how this week would have been previous to learning these tools and techniques. Yeah. I imagine it would have been quite different. Yeah, I think so. Last week I would have been self-harming by now, crying my eyes out, completely lost in a pit of despair. With with, I would have had some tools mm. um, like badminton and running and stuff. And it is different now because I am really struggling without those tools. But I have got other tools. Thank yes. goodness. So just to complete the the update on the week. Uh, what happened with your mum's operation? Yeah. Um, I like I sent Oliver a couple of like vlogs. Hiya. Um the hospital um, just phoned and um it because my mum's gone in and um and they said um, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, they said she's okay um and I can go and visit her. So um she's okay. Um so that's really good. Um, sorry, <laughs> it's so funny. I've been um, uh, holding it together all day and all week. Um, but my mum's okay. Um, yeah, I just go go see go see you. Hey, um, yeah. Sorry, I just had a like a couple of minutes of tears, but I'm okay now. Um, I think it's just relief, really. Um, yeah, the hospital phoned and said my mum was okay. Um, so we're just going to see her now in my ace two seater car. There's Hubby. There's the road. Yeah, it's been a blinking tough week, but um, I'm still smiling. <laughs> I think that's a grimace. Um, I've been employing some techniques from the program and what Alex has taught me, um, and it's still been really tough week but it's been so much better for the stuff I've learned from Alex really um yeah bye bye hi sorry I was just checking it was running um so we've just come back from visiting my mum in hospital um and uh, I picked my dad up took my dad and um, she's uh, she's okay, um, phys physically, and the operation's gone well and stuff. Um, but I just um, really, 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 really abusive to me and me and dad. When we were walking out of the hospital. We were passing other people in, in the ward and he was just smiling at us and waving and I looked at my dad and, and we were smiling and waving back. And it, it's just like, um, I think we visited the wrong person. All these other people would have been really pleased to see us. Anyway, it was just really sad. Um, so. Yeah, it was tough, but she's fine. Um, yeah, I'm a bit mixed up, I'm a bit overtired. Back to the session. The, the one thing that upset me more than anything was, um, I feel awful saying this, but hearing her speak to my dad is worse than hearing her speak to me like that. And so that really destroyed me when she was talking to my dad like that. It really broke me. And so how does he respond to it? Um, similar to me, he takes it and then occasionally, like me, he shares my sense of humour. We, we say something back, a little bit of an ego defence mechanism, a bit of trying to turn it into humour and that's how we cope. But he's very similar to me, he'll take it and occasionally he'll shout back. Hmm. But it's hard, it, I, it's hard watching someone you love getting it as well. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to share about last week, just so I'm up to date in terms of what's happening? Yeah. Um, just the difficulties with my brother and his girlfriend being so much closer and not stepping in mm. and, and helping 
because it, it restricts our lifestyle. Um, so like we were going to go down to up to Edinburgh Fringe and stuff and because it's so far away, we're just like, oh, we can't go. Because I, mean, I just just like, I wish my brother would just help. But he didn't even send her a message before she went in hospital. And just so. And what would happen if no one was responding? Because it sounds like there are things that are responded to that they actually need to be done. Yeah. And there's other things like the calls in the middle of the night where it's more her acting out her behavior. Yeah. Yeah. What would happen if no one responded to her acting out her behaviour? Uh, I've never, I've never not gone. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's hard. Mm. What do you think would happen if you didn't go, or you couldn't go? Um, I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself through the guilt. Like, and what would be the mechanism? Of that guilt. What I mean by that, and we're gonna answer my own question, that's your inner critic, isn't it? That after that experience, that that if you're saying no to her, what makes you feel guilty is that inner critic then that's saying you're so terrible, how could you do that? But it's really hard because I, yeah, I get it. But she she is really vulnerable. Hmm. Yeah. There's many, many vulnerable people that you're not taking phone calls from in the middle of the night. Mm. I have to think about it. Mm. That means stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> that means you must stop asking. <laughs> I had a tough week, Stop, mate. stop poking. <laughs> Lay off. Hey, where's my glass of water? I was like, can I have cider next? Well, I'm not here next week. It's getting tough, this. Like, I need more than water. <laughs> Are I'm we sure, done? I'm sure there's a bottle of whiskey that comes somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Don't even drink one. <laughs> Crack it on. Where's my Budweiser? <laughs> right, change the subject. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard, isn't it? I mean, it I've is, got established patterns of behavior yeah. from, for 45 totally. years. Totally, and, and, I, and I get that I'm asking you some very challenging questions. So I really appreciate you yeah. telling me to bug off. I yeah. think it's, it's, it's important that you're, because what I don't want this process to be is that you're used to your mom pushing you to do what she wants. Mm. And then I'm just pushing you to do what I think you should be doing. Yeah. It's really about you finding yeah. your own yeah. truth yeah. and your own inner voice yeah. and making your choices based on what is truly yeah. right, yeah. not just based upon yeah. old patterns and yeah. the reactivity from the past. Absolutely. Haley has just touched upon a really important point. One of the skills of therapy is finding the client's defenses and where appropriate challenging them and helping the client open up to how things could be different. However, when someone has experienced traumas related to people violating their boundaries, one of the key principles is to make sure the challenge is not being done in a way which also violates their boundaries. If we do, it can make the defenses become stronger or worse cause further trauma. So with Haley, I'm challenging her edges but also actively inviting her no when she sets a boundary and being careful to honor it. One of the things that we started talking about towards the end of last time was the little girl inside of you. Yeah. And her, or really your, emotional needs. Yeah. And your relationship with her and how you're being with her. And I just, and I know there's been, there's been a lot going on the last week. I was wondering, have you managed to reflect on that at all? Is that something that's been, has she been in your mind? Yeah, I was, I was thinking about it. I was going through some memories, some very early memories. And I, I realized that there was no point in my entire life where I haven't felt really anxious. And so I was just going to dip into some of the memories of really heightened anxiety that a little girl shouldn't be feeling and realizing that I'd never reached out and spoken or asked for help about them. I just didn't, it didn't occur to me that there was anyone I could talk to about them. Um, but also I was trying to be a little bit kinder, like whenever I brought something for myself, uh, or saved. I, I used to like running. I used to run when I was like, I used to run for the county when I was 12. Mm. So I was like, a little runner. <laughs> and um, I saved up and brought some running shoes. Um, I saved my pocket money up and brought some running shoes. And um, um, my mum took them off me and took them back. 
and it's it's like it was really tight because all all the other kids in my school were like stealing and getting in trouble and taking drugs and whatever. And I, I was like like really well behaved. I loved school and was really a really good kid, mm. really well behaved. And it's like I saved up for running shoes. I didn't. That, you know, it was a real, and she took them off me. And when I used to buy posters and stuff and of horses and sort of stick them on my wall, she'd come in and rip them off. And I was never allowed to spend any money. And so, so this week specifically, um, I, I, I bought some things for myself that mm. I, I haven't done because I, I just save and save and save and save. And, and so, what, so, what are some of the things that you bought? Um, just some, um, it's giving me a cry. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> Um, just some um, like uh, little embroidery sewy things, um, mm. and I thought as soon as my knee goes better, uh, I'm gonna book a beach ride with horses mm. and, and just spend some money on myself because uh, I never do it. It feels really indulgent. It feels like I shouldn't be doing it, and um, so um, yeah, it has been in my mind. Just the, the, some of the experiences I've been through, the fact that I've got a, a long established pattern of anxiety and the fact that I, I need to sort of treat myself and buy mm. stuff, which I have a huge difficulty with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that the kind of thing you meant? It is. I think that that's, that's wonderful that there's that shift in terms of how you're responding to your emotional wants and your mm. and your emotional needs mm. ultimately i'm also interested just on a kind of felt emotional level how it is like if you think about that younger place in you that was wanting to be seen and wanting to be celebrated in her love of horses and mm. her wanting to do well at school and her wanting to be able to just enjoy life and her being shut down from her needs and being told that you know she wasn't allowed to have them and I just wonder how you feel towards her as we're talking it's, it's a shame really isn't it it's that tight because I was a good I was so well behaved honestly um it's a shame. It's just you, a shame. You, you deserved more love than you received. Yeah, it, it's a shame. It's a shame. They did. They did the best they could. They did the best they could. Yeah. And you deserved more love than you received. Yeah. So the conversation we're having is not about a making right and wrong of your of your mom and your dad. Yeah. It's actually, and in a strange way, it's actually nothing to do with them. Yeah. It's to do with what happened inside of you. And what still happens yeah. inside of you, yeah. which is that you learned a way of relating to yourself right. emotionally, yeah. which is is cruel, harsh, yeah. judgmental, unkind, and unnourishing. Yeah. And because that's how you were related to, that's how you related, that how you learned to relate to yourself. I get it. And yeah. that's the bit. We can't change the past. We're not here to change them. Yeah. But we can change what happens inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. So how I was related to when I was little is how I now relate to myself. Yeah. Yeah. And what you learned wasn't necessarily the best way to relate to yourself. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. And we see that in different ways in your life. Yeah. Right. We see that from the very obvious examples such as self-harming yeah. to allowing yourself to be treated in ways that are not are not not really okay yeah. because that's how you're treating yourself anyway so it yeah. kind of it almost feels appropriate and familiar because that's what's already happening yeah. yeah as you change which is already what part of what's already happening as you change how you relate to yourself that will also change what what you do and don't accept from other people okay so as you think about that and you think about the little girl how do you feel towards her right now? This, this is my head going down, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking like I'm thinking, but I'm not yeah. really. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking at the girlfriend thinking. Um, I'm not giving you the right answers, am I? I'm, I'm sorry. That's the, me in a critic. The, 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 yeah, that's <laughs> your, your, well spotted. <laughs> yes. Well spotted. <laughs> because this is not about right answers. Okay. It's a, we're just inquiring. We're exploring yeah. into what's there. 
Right. So there isn't right and wrong. Yeah. There's just what feels like your experience. Yeah. I, I think it, I think I'm blocking it. I think there's part of me that's blocking it. Well, there's 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 various defensive strategies yeah. that have been there for a long time. Yeah. So it makes sense that as we go to some of these quite vulnerable places, yeah. that what happens is a defense mechanism comes yeah. in. And that's fine. Yeah. We're just not going to give that lots of attention. Yeah. What we're doing is we're giving our attention to what's actually arising. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's almost a grown-up me that's taking the little one's hand and saying, this is okay with Dad Strong. Interesting. So there's a grown-up you taking the little one's hand. Yeah. But what does the grown-up you feel like? Yeah, uh, stronger and knows that they, they can do more than they think they can. Now, where do you feel that in your body? It is like my torso kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so just give that some space. It sounds like a nice feeling. Like It's a place where you actually realize that you're stronger than you realize. Mm. You can do it. Mm. What, what does say more about what that feeling feels like? Yeah, it's quite it's quite empowering, really. It's um, it's reluctant though. It, it doesn't want to be strong. <laughs> I don't want to be strong. Why don't you, you want know? to be strong? Because it's just like um, um, um. Now that's gonna make me cry. <laughs> Because um, it means I have to go the distance rather than ducking out halfway through. Mm. But have you ever been one to duck out halfway never, through? Never, <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> See, I think, I think part of the challenge is that you were told for many years that you were weak. But the only way you could tolerate being told you were weak was because you were strong. But I think part of you didn't want certain people to know how strong you are because that might have caused conflict or that might have caused problems. And so it's almost like it's a bit of a, be a bit of like a secret spy. That It's like you've got these secret superpowers. This is the you that can run six marathons and 30 half marathons. This is the you that can go from being agoraphobic and living in one room for two years to coming back out into the world and going into an MRI, even though that you were afraid to do it. So there's this kind of strange situation where your conscious identity and what you're showing to others is that you're vulnerable and weak and not able to do things. And, and yet the truth is that you've got a superpower. Mm. Why do you think about that? They never could. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know if it never occurred. I think it probably did, actually. I think it probably yeah. did, thinking about it. Because I'll run, to, if something makes me afraid, I'll run towards it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you want to bet? And I'll, I'll deliberately, like, I have a couple of sordid, very sordid tales of stuff I've done in the extreme. Very sordid, that mm -hmm. can I? It's well, very of course, amusing. Of course, now I'm incredibly curious, but I but, yeah. but I also want to stay on track of what we're exploring. I know, but we're... this is an entertaining <laughs> sideline if you do want to go down it, because it, I can't believe I did it. It's go probably, on, tell me. No, no, no. Oh, well, I'm going <laughs> to know now. <laughs> no, I really can't. <laughs> you know... I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Move on. I'll tell all of you later. Stick around to the end of the episode to hear Haley's story. The point that you're making, the point that we're making here, I think is important though. Because the point is actually, you're strong. Mm -hmm. And I remember you said to me a few sessions ago that when your mum passes, that you wouldn't have any reason to be here anymore. But then you'd reflected on that and some of the people that you'd met through the counseling training and made you realize that there are things beyond your mum that are there to live for. But what I'm also really hearing from you is just how much strength you actually have mm. and just because you might find yourself at different points in your life like we all do in unfamiliar territory or places that the ways that we've historically met the world may not work anymore and you have to find a new way to do it and you know i know right now it feels challenging because of your knees and you know running and badminton and we don't know exactly how that's going to work out but i think there's lots of reason to be hopeful and be optimistic but we don't know what's going to happen mm. but here's the thing 
we can't know the circumstances of our future, yeah. but we can decide the place from which we're going to meet them. Okay. And what I'm hearing from you is the realization that you have far more strength than you give yourself credit for. So a lot of the things that you may have anxiety about, if you know that you're going to meet them from a place of strength, you don't have to be afraid. Yeah, makes it totally makes sense. As we're talking now, how do you feel in your body? Yeah, we feel, feel like you've yeah, you've got a bit of strength, like armor. Oh, I've got some armor on, <laughs> you know, yeah. sort of. So, what does that feel like when you feel like you've got some armor on? You feel like you've got some strength. Yeah, so say more about it. It is. It's like life can chuck anything at you, and you're like, whatever. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, it does. It does feel stronger. Um, I I know it sounds really weird, but I'm really good in a crisis. Yeah, I'm I actually really really yeah. good. People would think I'd be the worst person, and like say my husband, for example, he's. He, but I'm so good in an absolute yeah. crisis because I think I'm so used to that heightened anxiety. Yeah, nothing changes. You're for me. comfortable like, in that place. Sort of, yeah, I'm really like so. The worse it gets, I just go really calm and sort everything yeah. out and sort. Of, but that's yeah. also because. You, as you're as you're recognizing your homeostatic balance yeah. is normalized to a high level yeah that's ridiculous well part of what we're learning to do is to slow oh. that down and calm that down yeah. and to normalize to a new level yeah that's uh, i've really got to work back on that because because everything's been like running i've got i'm aware that that's got to come right down i've got to get my sleep back and stuff yeah so that's on the agenda. What what does this next few weeks look like? Yeah, um, f- um, frighteningly empty, but I'm not mm. afraid because I'm strong. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> normally I'd be frighteningly empty. But no, it's okay. It's calming right So down. you've got some space. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, let's be honest, you've been through it the last few weeks between <laughs> carrying the torch for the, for the Commonwealth Games and... You know, what's been happening with your mom and in terms of your own having the MRI scan and the various dynamics. So just having a few weeks where you really, it almost becomes like Project You, Project yeah. Haley, where yeah. you're really working to bring yeah. that balance down. Yeah. I think that would be really helpful yeah. for you. Yeah. You know, it's almost like we can only give our attention to so many things at once. Yeah. And I think you've done an amazing job these recent weeks, that everything yeah. that's been going on yeah. to still do your homework and still work yeah. with things. Yeah. But I think it sounds like a really great idea yeah. to have some time now where you can make this, have an easier time in terms of focusing on this work. Absolutely. Yeah. In these coming weeks, complete the reset program. Yeah. Because you've still got a few modules to go in yeah. there. You can also revisit some bits. Yeah really focus on keep going your meditation practice well yeah. done for getting that in place yeah. daily really work with your stop process yeah particularly on those obsessive compulsive patterns yeah and just see if you can really you know and also as we've been talking about today and last time giving space to your feelings and looking at your relationship with that little girl inside of you yeah and let's see how much calmer things can be there between now and next time okay i'm, I'm good yeah yeah good Look at me, <laughs> <I'm> grinny. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, God, I'm sorry if I held you up. <laughs> Help me up. No, we've still got four minutes on the clock, so you're fine. <laughs> Any uh, other yeah. questions that you've got? Um, um, no, so my inner critic wants to apologise to you for sort of not getting some of the things you've said, but I'm not going to let it because I have understood it. Yeah, you so, can tell your inner critic I don't really give a shit what yeah, it thinks anyway. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> so, I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> I give a shit what you think. Yeah. Just don't give a shit what it thinks. Yeah, got it. Okay. Good. Thank you, Hayley. Thank you. When we've experienced traumas in childhood, often the conclusion that we draw is that it means we must have been weak. But just because we didn't have the resources we needed at the time, it doesn't define who we are. Indeed, often the opposite is true. The very fact that we survived the experience and manage to develop the coping strategies to function in the world is a sign of how strong we are. Unlocking and owning this strength is often a key to building our future the way we want it. And that is at the heart of Haley's work. 
and continue to follow Haley's journey over the coming weeks as we release weekly episodes of her sessions with me and to help support you in coming on the journey with us. I've created some materials to accompany the series. Each week, there is a bonus video with me and worksheet to bring the session to life for you. In this week's reflections, you will find some exercises to help explore your inner strength and to bring it more fully into your life. You can find these resources for free at intherapy.alexhoward.com. Here's what's coming up next week. For the old story to be right, a lot of people have to be wrong. It's not her fault, though. But this isn't, this isn't a blame game. This is not about right and wrong. This is about you and your life and your choices. I've stuck by the boundaries, but it's left me emptier than I've ever been in my life. I think you've done everything that one can do in life to earn self-respect and self-worth. And I think it's important that, that you let yourself see that. As promised earlier in the episode, here is Haley's sordid tale. Now, I should say that although Haley's husband, Pete, wasn't privy to the story at the time, she did subsequently share it with him. One thing I did want to ask uh, was, you mentioned yesterday that there's a bit of a, a cheeky side. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> and, and you said that there was a sordid tale. Pete, and just I... go get that thing out the car <laughs> while I tell these guys this. You know that thing in the car? <laughs> go out of your shop, man. <laughs> go on, go on. I can't eat if he's there. Yeah. Go on, man. Off you go. Just go check. Go check the rats. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Oh, sorry. I just massively no, dropped him in No, no. <laughs> he's, he's gone. He's well behaved, isn't he? Um, the, oh, no. You don't have to tell no, me no, the story, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, he's gone. Bless him. Um, <laughs> so I had... It's a true story, this is. It's a true story. It's not that funny, but it's true. It's really true. OK. So... I had a, a massive, um, like, real hang-up with body image, like, and it was tipping into, you know, body dysmorphic disorder mm -hmm. where you really hate yourself and mm. you look at yourself and I think, I really hate myself. And I was starting to obsess about it. I was like, this is really bad. And, like, I got to the stage where I wouldn't go in the shower or bath because I couldn't stand looking at my own body. So I'd go into the shower clothed because it was that bad. And I thought, this is this is going to control me, like staying in the living room and agoraphobia and all that. So this is really bad. So I thought to myself, Right, I'm not having this. So I thought, what is my idea of the worst nightmare ever? What what would I hate more than anything? What can I do to think, do you know what? I'm not putting up with this crap. So have you heard of Spencer Tunic? I have not. Spencer Tunic, this was quite a few years ago now. So he does nude mass photo shoots. Right. Um, like masses of people and he puts them in different places in the world. Okay. So he was coming to Manchester near where we live and he was at the Lowry to drive out in the middle of the night, you don't even know. <laughs> drove out in the middle of the night, he was working nights. It's not coming back. I drove out in the middle of the night and I thought, I'm going to do it, 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 I'm going to do it. And I've got a photo. So uh, there's, there's about 300 of us. You can look the photos up online. Um, and everybody took all the clothes off and we were hanging over is it Concord and in the park. We, we, bought naked for this art photo <laughs> shoot because it, it was just exposure, <laughs> wasn't it? That's not That's even the funny amazing. bit. Oh, That's God. Not okay, we haven't even got to that bit yet. To okay. Oh, all no, right. he's coming back. <laughs> um, so we'd all left our clothes in a certain place and it was okay, it felt very tribal. Uh, we'd all left our clothes by a tree. Okay, so I got the wrong tree. Okay, I'm not going to have the only person naked. And everybody else was fully clothed, so I couldn't find mine. So I was standing there <laughs> in, in a mass. Hi, Pete. And I'm not even joking, honestly. And 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 anyway, oh, look, Pete, over there at yonder <laughs> tree. But um, I was the last, I was the last person. I was the last person. Oh, wow. How did it feel to do that, though? Uh, yeah, it was empowering, really, because you so in life you get two choices, so you? you can let something wreck your life or you can say, you know, I'm going to run with this. And it's so much more fun to run with it. And I make, I make a joke of it now, but I can't tell you how bad it was. It, mm. Like, living with that mm. and then thinking, you know what, do you know what? No chance. And I, and I did it, and it is like running the marathon, isn't it? It's like, um, but yeah, I did it completely. Did I finish the story before Pete came back? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, I think if when people say you got to, that, that, that well, was That's gutsy. what I was going to say that in terms gutsy. of talking about strength. Yeah, that you know, was 
I know, I knew all that too, and that was really gutsy. But it backfired in the end. <laughs> was like, I don't think so. I still think it <laughs> makes it a more funny story. It does, yeah. Uh, but I'm the, assuming, I'm assuming you did find your clothes. Yes, yes. You said the punchline. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, was, I mean, I started crying, and then the guy gave me a, a you know, let oh, me God. help you. <laughs> oh gosh. But it was quite funny because the drunk drunks were coming. We did it very, very early in the morning, and the drunks were coming out of the pubs and stuff, and they were like. Because with that, I'll have to, you'll have to look, look it up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, there's P. <laughs> no idea. 